All right. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I'm uh, Jay Vijayan, founder and CEO of uh, Techion. I'm here to talk about uh, the future of automotive retail, just my views, a little bit about my company, which is Techion. Um, to give a little bit more about my background and my connection to automotive retail outside of um, Techion is prior to starting Techion, I was the CIO of uh, Tesla. I had a great opportunity to build um, most of Tesla's systems from ground up, which also gave me a view of what is really the what are the gaps, what is lacking in the automotive ecosystem. Of course, as you all know, Tesla is a company that revolutionized the automotive industry itself, creating EVs, trailblazing EVs. But across the board, from an automotive retail delivery and customer experience, I found out there was a massive gap. Again, it's kind of the elephant in the room. Pretty much anyone who has purchased a car would know what that experience is. See, outside of uh, buying a Tesla, unless you know someone in a retail location, in a dealership, the experience of buying a car is not great. It's not something you can compare to if you buy an uh, iPhone or an iPad or a you know, Mac from Apple, or if you order and buy something from Amazon or you know, um, Flipkart. There is really not much in terms of transparency, customer experience, and the whole end-to-end -end product experience. So what I'm talking about. Uh, I personally went through this um, in the US. I live in the US. Um, Techion is present in the US in Bangalore and in Chennai. The car buying experience globally, to most part, is very, very poor compared to any other consumer experience. You may all know that automotive industry is the largest consumer industry by dollar value. But the experience itself, when you go through any other e-commerce experience, it is a very subpar to poor experience end-to-end. -end. So with that background, when I had this opportunity to build the systems for Tesla, uh, pretty much you know, starting from Tesla.com to internal systems, factory systems, and then the Tesla retail systems, and I felt, you know, the rest of the automotive industry is lacking, in my view, the technology platform to bridge all of the gaps and fragmentation that exists. So what do I mean? So between the manufacturer, a retailer, and the consumer, there was massive amount of gap, which I felt very strongly that technology can fill in and give state-of-the-art consumer experience very similar to how any other e-commerce experience. If you think, you know, in your view, if Apple is the best e-commerce experience or Amazon is the best e-commerce e experience, I strongly believe, and that's what we brought to life, that automotive experience can be even better. So that's the premise of starting Techion. So what I'll do is I'll walk through a little bit more about what Techion does. And then in the Q&A between, uh, you know, Arun has some um, great questions. So we will go through much deeper about w where I think automotive industry is going and some of my experiences as well, okay? So about Techion. So, um, we were fortunate to have some really large global investors. Um, you could see uh, Index Ventures, Advent, which is a you know, $60 billion fund, Alkion, Durable, some really top class investors who believe in what we are doing, which helped, uh, helped us as a company to scale. The more important, which you could see on the second line, because we are in automotive industry, we're really fortunate to receive investments from some global automotive brands, some phenomenal brands, General Motors, Hyundai, Nissan, Renault, Mitsubishi, and BMW, and XR is a holding company of you know, Stellantis and Ferrari brands. So we're really fortunate, and it's a great validation for what we are solving in the industry, right? 
Okay. So, take you on what do we do. Um, to really bring that vision to life in the automotive industry, so we, we delivered three clouds as part of one single platform. Automotive retail cloud focused on the retail ecosystem. Dealers, retailers, whatever form they are, you can run the entire business on the cloud. Every part of the experience. I'll go a little bit you know, deeper. And then after uh, the automotive retail cloud, we delivered automotive enterprise cloud, which is focused on the manufacturers globally, because as you could imagine, most of the manufacturers don't have a very good digital front end that could take the entire customer experience from shopping to purchasing to delivery. So Automotive Enterprise Cloud does the whole thing and then connects their retailers and consumers as well. And then the third one is the Partner Cloud because automotive is a massive ecosystem. And it is very important to have a very strong partner ecosystem which can securely connect to each other, share data, and really create a win-win ecosystem. We are expanding that into much larger developer ecosystem as well. Not only the technology partners, automotive industry partners, also um, a developer platform as well as part of the partner cloud. So that's kind of the overview of our technology platforms. So there is a quick product video, um, just two minutes video, It'll be good for you to see. Not sure what happened. The slides continue to move by itself. Okay. So this is something I already covered. Um, this is the first time in over 50 years where there is a one single platform that brings the entire ecosystem. It's also not a superficial marketplace or a platform that just connects people. It is a true operating platform. What I mean by that is Everything from vehicle shopping experience to buying experience to online document vault to securely sign documents to deliver the vehicle scheduling deliveries, everything comes together in one single technology platform. Sorry, folks, technical problems. So um, what, what I was talking about the first time in 50 years, I'll just keep this one just to be safer. Um, first time in 50 years where you bring the retailers, manufacturers, everyone on one technology platform. And as I said, it is a true operating platform. What, everything from vehicle shopping to inventory management to parts inventory, parts warehousing, uh, you know, payments, general ledger, AP, AR, so the entire operations can be run on the cloud. The entire automotive retail operations can be run on the cloud. Okay. All right. So this is one customer testimonial video. This is focused on the retail customers. We also, as I said, we have enterprise customers, the manufacturers. So this is just the retail customers. It'd be good for you to see. Techion is the Netflix to Blockbuster. Anybody who wants to fight the change, anybody who wants to still do business in the Stone Age is gonna be a dinosaur. I think going forward, you know, Techion is gonna be the, on the leading edge of 
how we go to market with electric vehicles. This is the way of the future. I see Techion is the next Amazon in our industry. The Techion invoice comes across as one page, very simple to read compared to other DMS bills where you might have 30 pages and it is highly convoluted. What we're talking about with Techion is not evolutionary, it's revolutionary. As far as making more money, I mean, it's it's been awesome. Paychecks have been dealers have been in a position where they could not trust their DMS providers. And I want to be in business with people I can trust. That's why I do business with Techion. Things that have taken us three weeks or four weeks to get done with other DMS providers, Techion's been able to do overnight. Everything we've asked for has been immediate response. The thing I love about Techion is that they know that they need to make you know a whole system and that's what they've done so that it really encompasses all that you know we need to do to take care of our customers. This market is ferocious right and those who harness that and pull that together to mutually sell cars are gonna win and that's why we went to Techion. It's easier for them to get checked in and out and engage with the dealership and at the end of the day that leads to long-term customer engagement and retention. Every five deals, you're saving an hour. We'll pick up an hour each day. It, it will add up tremendously. What I was usually doing in you know, three, four, five hours, I'm able to do in 15, 20 minutes now. I haven't seen a lot of marketing from Techion, but there's a lot of buzz in the marketplace. And I believe the word of mouth is where that exponential growth is surfacing. You don't get a reputation like that without delivering on your promises. interest of time, I will run through the next few slides so that Arun and I can chat and go a bit more deeper on the questions. All right. So we are expanding globally. Um, we have a large presence in the US, ramping up very quickly. We are just growing in Canada. Uh, we just established in France and UK. Okay. So with that, I'll finish my presentation and we can get into the Q&A. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Very, very impressive growth. And I've known uh, Jay from his days in Tesla. And so we have just been amazed as to how quickly and how well he has kept business. So let's start from the very beginning about the genesis of Techion. I mean, I think you did about what sparked the idea for building Techion a little bit when you were, I guess, at Tesla. But as we know today, you know, you guys have grown at an incredible speed, right? From about a couple of hundred employees to now you have 2,000 employees worldwide and uh, valued at about three and a half billion in the last round. So can you talk a little bit about the journey and what have been some of the learnings of this journey? Can we get a second mic, please? Oh, yeah. All right, yeah. Arun, again, um, after a long time, good to chat with you, and this time on the stage. <laughs> um, so the journey has been incredible. Um, not without you know, ups and downs, as always, uh, but definitely very thankful for all the support um, we have received over the years. Um, so quickly, the first, see, I'm sure you see um, in your um, role being in Thai, meeting entrepreneurs, being an investor, mentor to companies, and um, I have done that as well for the last 10 to 15 years, but going through this personally, there was a lot of learning. So the first one I'll start with, people did quite a bit of warning to me that um, this is something, you know, very, very hard, almost impossible to do because this industry, some other, uh, there were significant amount of failures prior to Techion, um, including the large um, providers, including Microsoft, SAP. Um, there are many, many small providers who tried to disrupt the space and didn't succeed. Um, so there was a lot of warning early days to say, you know, why don't you, you know, Jay, with your level of background, why don't you do solve one problem, one small problem in the automotive retail, you know, with AI or ML. Um, but I was very clear that if we are going to solve this problem, we are going to solve this comprehensively, otherwise we are not going to. 
So the first few years were very tough. Uh, we had uh, different problems, like for example, I'll give you one simple example is, uh, we had this uh, you know, kind of a chicken and egg starting problem. What, what do I mean by that is, we developed the first prototype of the platform. We you know, went to retailers, because we started with automotive retail cloud first. Retailers loved what we built, and they said, this is, this is amazing. And they'll say, okay, for us to try, we need our manufacturers to certify you. And when we go to manufacturers, it's very, very tough, and they're all busy, you know, big companies. They came back and said, we won't even able to be talk, or we, we, won't, we can't even talk to you until you have like, you know, 100 customers running on our platform. So our question was, where do we start? Like, if you can't even roll out one customer without the integration certification to the manufacturers, but manufacturers are saying, like, you can't come to us before you have 100 customers. So we had to solve many of these problems over the years. So journey has been a lot of learnings. The first three, four years is more proof and validation. We are still a young company, a little bit, six and a half years. Um, but after that, it has been massive amount of validation. Some discipline paid off big time. We were in stealth mode for almost four years, really didn't spend much time doing any marketing, anything. Um, and then now it's all the focus is about how do we scale the business gracefully. We have a very good problem where we have a massive demand, so we need to make sure that how do we, you know, scale supply. I mean, it's a cloud platform, but as still rolling out customers, you know, training them, migrating our customers from all kinds of legacy systems to the cloud, all of those were the learning process that we went through. Now it's more global scaling from US to Canada, France to UK, and further. Thank you. And so, you know, I guess what you have done is you have taken a very hard problem which giant companies couldn't fix, right? The Microsofts and SAPs. And you pretty much have fixed going by your growth, et cetera. So I do want to sort of ask you a little bit about working with your previous boss, Elon Musk. I mean, he pretty much did the same thing with the EVs, right? I mean, if you think about it, we had century-old uh, auto industry. And Musk has done that multiple times for various sectors, right? Whether it's PayPal Absolutely. or whether it's, you know, uh, SpaceX or whatever. And so, can you talk a little bit about were there any learnings from working with Elon? And what is he like as an individual? I mean, I don't know anybody else who has directly worked for Elon Musk. And I'm sure our audience would love to know a little bit about Elon as well. <laughs> Well, you know, as you know, he's probably, I don't know, I could say the most uh, popular or um, most followed person across the globe. I don't know if I could add anything more. And I did work with directly for him for a um, little bit over four years. Um, I, in, incredible experience. For my experience was very, very positive. It was definitely intense experience for the first six months to a year, getting to know you know, aligning to his, you know, wavelength, if you would call it as, um, because any targets he sets pretty much starts as mission impossible. Literally, there's no way in the world when first he delivers that he wants something to be done, uh, the first immediate feeling is like, no way this could be done in that given time frame. Um, so I, I had my target similar to that. Um, a lot of learnings um, I learned from him is in terms of you know how do you approach a problem um, very objectively with first principles at the same time how do you really have that you know I would say a grit to take it all the way and see it through and deliver that right um, just to share my um, I've I've spoken about this in the past as well in my prior interviews a few years ago, my first task, um, the big mission impossible he gave me was to build a ERP system in three months. So I, I've implemented ERP systems, I worked at you know, Oracle prior to that, and implementing an ERP system takes years. Um, I think many of you who probably have been in the field know about this. So that was my first uh, goal, but fast forward, we were able to pull that off um, 
and bring that vision to life. So it was a lot of great experience working with them. Um, I learned quite a bit, um, just purely from a principal's perspective, and apply, uh, you know, some of them in my learning, and then I had um, my own, you know, ways of creating new ideas and delivering to make my business successful as well. Great, thank you. And just before we get off the topic, I mean, we've also heard about other maverick, charismatic, driven entrepreneurs like Steve Jobs and some of their quirks. Uh, is he a difficult guy to work with? Is he a <clears throat> tough taskmaster? See, um, he... Sorry, didn't mean to put you on the spot, but you know, <laughs> the audience wants some masala too, you know? <laughs> you know what, they get that every day on Twitter. <laughs> true, the true. I don't want to add anything more, so I think they can see more. Uh, I, it's publicly, you know, it's available. So, as I said, my, I can just share my experience working with him was very positive and a lot of learnings. Yes, first six months to a year was very, very tough. Yes, uh, he definitely gives very, very tough targets. The way I've seen is he sets very tough, many times impossible targets to himself, and then he kind of flows that down to his teams and expect them to execute. Thank you. And we know that, I mean, Techion is going to do great, but I think post Techion's exit, uh, you know, Jay could have a career in diplomacy as well. So very diplomatic answer. Say, so check out his Twitter. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> so moving on, um, you know, you work so closely with the industry and, you know, so from your perspective, where do you see EVs and you know, auto autonomous vehicles and hybrids? Are they kind of going to take over sort of the auto industry, in the, especially in the developing nations? I mean, what does the future look like for this sector? Uh, absolutely. I, I think EVs will take over um, across the globe. Um, there are you know, two barriers that might definitely delay that process. So the positive thing is massive amount of investment is flowing in across the globe. Every country has set target, every state has set targets. These are all going to accelerate fuel, bringing more EVs to the market. The two big barriers, I believe, are, when I say barriers that will delay the mass adoption of EVs is number one is price. EVs still expensive. Still, there are, you know, one to one, it's two to three times more price. Um, all over the world, governments are giving subsidies to increase adoption. So the price has to come down for mass adoption of EVs. Number two, very closely related, sometimes these both are equal, is infrastructure for EVs. Um, you know, charging, uh, we all know this, some, it, it really taxes the grid, so the power system to ta uh, really charge EVs in large quantities has to be improved across all the countries that they think they need to produce EVs, but they need to deliver the infrastructure for customers, not only ch the charging systems, but the whole power system to handle, if there is a way to do that through renewable energy, right, through uh, solar, preferably, or wind uh, energy to allow that to be charging EVs. I think those two barriers has to be crossed, um, and that will accelerate even further. And I believe right now, um, those are taking a lot more time than really production of EVs. Companies are setting targets, they're working towards it, that's all happening. So in my view, yes, EVs are going to be the future, but for that to be faster, everyone has to work towards how do we reduce cost of uh, EVs and how do we improve infrastructure globally. And I mean, as entrepreneurs, you should think about is, you know, if you have ideas to start business, that's a great business. I and mean, many people are doing it, but the point is there is a lot more need for it to create infrastructure and ecosystem for electric vehicles globally on the private and public sector as well. So just as a follow on to that question, you said the two important things were, you know, price as well as the reliability of the grid. 
uh, on both those counts, countries, developing countries like ours in India, right? I mean, we don't have a reliable grid and definitely our consumers are cost sensitive. So do you see that EVs are going to take off in India anytime soon or is this going to be decades in the coming? Good question. Um, not, so truly not anytime soon, but I don't think it will also be decades. So I would say, you know, as you already s have seen, uh, you know, around every other, I mean, most of the major brands have already announced an EV, but only thing is it's not mass produced yet. So I think it will happen faster than, um, you know, a decade, but for it to be adopted, you're right, and the, the, the reliability of the grid problem is real. And I think as well as the governments, as well as the, the private companies, there is opportunity to build successful businesses to you know, supply for this need. And the governments also need to focus on not only giving subsidies for vehicle production, EV vehicle production, but also the infrastructure uh, production as well. Thank you. So I know that uh, you know, Techion has uh, ventured beyond North America and now you've expanded into Europe. Uh, what are some of the differentiators that you see between these two markets? Uh, it could be culturally, it could be consumer characteristics. Are they very different from what you see in North America? Um, there, are, there are differences in... Yes, there, is, there are differences. The way I would say is there are two, two types of um, categories I would, um, you know, or I would categorize into two, the differences. First is very natural differences of conducting business, like in, in software language, um, business applications language localization. So you probably know well local currency, local tax structure, um, the way business has to be conducted based on the local rules and regulations um, is the first category of change. Uh, Europe is more complex, mainly because, you know, multiple countries Smaller in size, but a lot of differences. So the fundamentals of building software has to be done right. Otherwise, it will be a massive overhead. And that's what we have done as a you know, modern cloud technology company. Um, my team, I'm super proud to say I've done an amazing job to build that core infrastructure agnostic of different regions so that we can do localization on top of it. The second difference is um, the consumer behavior and workflow. Um, I, I can give a simple example. Like when you take your car for service, I'm, I'm sure you all know what happens here, but I'm just giving a difference between UK and US. US, the workflow is you book an appointment anytime you want. If there is an appointment, you take it, or there is, they take walk in appointments, you can go do a walk in as well. But in UK, typically they prepare much in advance. Um, people keep up appointments. In US, they don't keep up appointments a lot. Um, the dealerships prepare like two days, three days in advance for a customer who's coming in. Everything, getting the parts ready to all of the things that are necessary. So the software has to take all of those into account. So those are the two differences, Arun, and uh, we have seen and we have taken care of it. And culturally, and from uh, conducting the business and then the consumer behavior, these are the two types of differences we have seen. Great, thank you. So, in, you know, looking at some of your past interviews, you have, you know, very often said that the automotive market is the second largest consumer market after housing. So, what is in store for the automotive market and what can customers and consumers expect as a whole? And at the same time, what challenges do you see, foresee for the market? Yeah. Uh, great, great question. So, as the Industry trend is evolving with EVs, the big trend, EVs and autonomous, um, you know, cars. Outside of that, in terms of customer experience is key. I believe there will be a big change because EVs are driving the business behavior of manufacturers and retailers because customers are with a new product, new line of product, there's an opportunity for them to change that customer experience. What do I mean by that? So today, vehicle buying is complicated. Okay, so you, if you go to a you know, dealership to buy, there is no very, very few, very, very few globally, 
OEMs where you could shop online and then complete your order online and get your card delivered, um, right? But at the same time, touching and feeling the product is very important. So I'll give a little bit, uh, you know, context to this. I think you all will be able to relate. There is this big question about, you know, our cars being will be purchased 100% online. Will retail locations go away? Dealerships go away? Um, I don't think so. Here is the reason why. Um, today, Apple still opens new stores. Why do they open new stores? You can order an iPhone from your home and get it delivered, but people still go sometimes stand in line to buy a phone. Why do they do that? Because they want to touch, feel the product. And when I walk into a mall with my family, if I want to see a new Apple product to walk into the store, that is pretty much like a test drive. What is happening in today's dealerships is that enjoyable experience is not the majority of the time spent. So I bought a BMW 2000 before, you know, before I joined Tesla around, I think, 2009. I knew exactly what car to buy. I did all of my research. Me and my wife went to the BMW showroom um, in, the, in Santa Clara in uh, Silicon Valley. It took literally eight grueling hours. Only 15 minutes I did for test drive, which was an enjoyable experience looking at the product. For all kinds of other reasons, haggling of price, you know, signing like, you know, thick documents, searching for copies of documents, all kinds of crazy things. So we are completely shifting that, a technology platform that can change that, where when you walk into a store, you do it at your choice. You, your, most of the time you spend should be the enjoyable experience of experiencing the product. And the least enjoyable portion of everything from signing documents can be done online, through your phone, at your home, at your office, doesn't matter. Making that simple, changing the all, what I mean by that is changing the consumer experience with this EV, with autonomous cars, customers will have choice. That's the future. And that's what we are doing at Techion is customers are not asking, I'm going to buy my car 100% online or I'm going to go to a dealership and buy. Every customer, including me as a customer, I want transparency, I want convenience, and I want choice. I can start my shopping at home. I can walk into a dealership, experience the product, and then get it delivered to my home, or I can start my shopping at a dealership and then finish my purchase at my home. That is the choice as a consumer I want. That is exactly, in addition to the EVs and autonomous cars, giving the consumer the choice they want on how they would purchase and make whatever way they want to purchase, make that experience seamless, is what I think is the future. Great, thank you. Uh, I think we're out of time, but I'm gonna quickly ask one last question, which is what is next for Techion? And I'll just do a follow on to that just so that I can get something for our audience as well. Where do you see opportunities for entrepreneurs in India to participate in this sector? Yeah, um, so Techion, we're, you know, while we crossed 3.5 billion in value last year, I, you know, strongly believe we are just scratching the surface. Very early stages of the growth, we have huge amount of growth ahead of us. Uh, we are a very small percentage in the US, but growing really fast. We just entered last year Canada market and growing. Um, this year, um, just a few months ago, we started in you know, France and then um, in UK. So massive amount of growth ahead of us. Super excited about what is there for Techion. And we want to be that number one platform in the next you know, five years, truly the platform of record for automotive retail. For entrepreneurs, uh, Arun, um, I covered this as part of you know, answering some of your other questions is, I think the first is the EV infrastructure space, both software and hardware, right? Today, everything is software defined. I'm not talking about just setting up the infrastructure hardware. I know there are companies that are doing, and in fact, I personally um, have invested in um, one company as well, which does it. And this is a global opportunity. India as well. India is still in very early stages. In fact, while driving to this conference, um, we were chatting in the car about exactly this. You know, new companies delivering EVs, but charging infrastructure is not there, so there's a lot of opportunity there. Uh, and, and writing software to do that efficiently also is number one. 
Number two is increasing the customer experience um, for both you know, EV delivery as well as um, the autonomous car delivery as well. So these two, there is a lot of ideas that I've seen and I, I feel there is a lot more opportunity here. Great. Jay, thank you so much. It's been wonderful speaking with you and our congratulations again on fantastically scaling uh, Techion and we wish you all the best. Thank you, Arun. Thank you, Tai, for the opportunity.